This is a comment from r slash RPG horror stories, but it's not a horror story in the traditional sense where somebody's ranting about something that happened to them. This comment is just a horror story in itself. Yeah, every new game I run, I inevitably get some FNG wank trying to roll up somebody who uses a gun. They're all excited to shoot things, even though everybody knows D&D is a high fantasy medieval setting, so that's just stupid. So anyways, I always roll behind the screen and be like, Oh, so sorry, you got a one, your gun misfires and blows your hands off. Now you're just standing there looking stupid, like the Venus de Milo, but without the glorious oobies. They get so Butt hurt. Me and my core cadre of real players laugh our butts off every time. Where's your OP sharpshooter feet now? The cleric asked. They usually leave by that point all upset. The last thing they hear as they run out the door weeping is our fire decapitating their gimp trash character with his die katana. He rolls a natural 20 every time. There are plenty of fake I am very badass posts out there, but this one has got to take the cake in just how sad it is. Imagine getting this pissed off about the gunslinger homebrew class. You've got to love Dungeons and Dragons. It's the only hobby I know that can show you just how whiny, unsportsmanlike, and downright creepy some seemingly well-adjusted people really are, and I'll always treasure it for that. In the spirit of purging the weirder bits of D&D I played from my brain, I thought it would be fun to rattle off a few horror stories that aren't long or dramatic enough for their own individual posts. Feel free to pop a few into the comments as well. A player in a game I ran once threatened to beat me over the head with the player's handbook because he rolled poorly three times in a row. These rolls were all public and roll 20 I had no means of affecting them. We don't talk to that guy anymore. A new player in the Adventurers League game intentionally focused down and killed an NPC that I and the other players had been vocally enthusiastic about capturing alive all session. We'd been screwed over by that character pretty hard and were looking forward to serving them their just desserts. There was a lot of very awkward, frustrated silence going around after the DM announced that they were, uh, dead. A long-running campaign hosted by a friend of mine will always have a chapter known as the Restraining Order Act, thanks to a player that didn't seem to understand just how creepy it was to do nothing other than hit on all the female NPCs. That was the first in-universe restraining order I've ever seen in a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. The same player also used the dice rolling bot we used to fuck his dice rolls. He also rolled every check he made with advantage and an extra d4 because the DM was too new to know that the class feature he was using didn't actually work like that. The guy later was booted from the campaign, rather more politely than I think he should have been, and made a post on the sub complaining about it. Where, where is it? I've scoured. I've scoured for days and I did not find this post, but if you guys know where it is, please tell me. We must read it. A play-by-post campaign I played and had an in-world mechanic where, if you took too long to post in-game, the teleportation crystal that had sent you into action magically yoinked you back to base. A fine idea for keeping the pace going and letting players drop in and out in theory. In practice, however, the amount of in-game and real-world time it took to zap out of existence was inconsistent and based on the DM's whimsy. My character was once teleported out for inactivity because I stopped posting to let two other characters talk, simply letting mine listen to their conversation and wait for a moment to add something. The DM didn't warn you or take criticism on their reasons either. Needless to say, with characters dropping in and out like a bad cell phone connection, the game didn't last long. I never played this game or even joined it, but I saw an ad for a campaign in a pretty large Discord server that I don't think will ever leave my brain. The DM was seeking out a party of five to six players to play characters that were slaves to their DM PC, a beautiful elven princess. They also heavily suggested that the players should play monstrous races, and Flyout stated that there would be a lot of ERP involved. Props to whoever that was for being so upfront about it, but one can only imagine what could drive a person to be so incredibly horny on main channel. For now, that's my entire library of horror stories. Perhaps 2022 will bring me some more bite-sized RPG anecdotes in time for 2023. Only time will tell. Until then, enjoy your new year and happy dungeon crawling. 
Thank you for the wish of good juju, friend. Well, that is certainly something. All of these are bad in themselves, and I've talked about all of these issues before. Maybe not the heavy ERP game, but you know, at least the DM is honest. And if he finds a group that's uh, into that, then, well, you know, good for them. But maybe maybe not put it on the main channel. It uh, It's not exactly the place. But yeah, I'm glad that the OP still enjoys Dungeons & Dragons, even after all of these. It's all about managing the horror, making sure that you get out if it's too bad, and making sure to have open communication with the people you're playing with. Next story. I was playing in a D&D 5th edition game through Discord, and long story short, my DM was completely unprepared. It was even worse because they delayed the session twice, and the final product just left the group feeling really awkward. When asked why, the DM explained that he only had 15 bucks to spend on the game. I responded with, Why didn't you just get Adventures in Thistledown from Tabletop Totality? Tabletop Totality is back on this channel, sponsoring us once again with their newest Kickstarter, Tales in Dracuva. This is a full new adventure book for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition that takes place in the city of Thistledown, acting as the introduction to Tabletop's brand new homebrew world, Dracuva. Located on a continent ravaged by ancient arcane forces, Thistledown is a metaphorical tinderbox. Guilds, villains, and more are working within the busy city to try to gain prominence and power. On top of that, hobgoblins and mad mages are making raids upon various areas of the continent. Basically, it's complete chaos, and that is the perfect place for some adventurers to save the day. Or maybe make it worse. That is up to you to decide. If you want a book filled with original creatures, new magic items, and original races, then this is perfect for you. There's even an item based on me! I'm canon! The Mask of Bad Juju is an item based on my character, and you get a little bit of lore on Crispy's Tavern. So, if you're interested, head down into the description down below, support Tabletop Totality on Kickstarter, supporting our sponsors supports us, and without further ado, I am going to turn back into an animated rat so that we can get back to the video. If there's one thing you learn from this story, it's this. If you notice there's a problem, a good group will try to fix it, and a bad one will blame you for noticing. This is the time three chumps tried to build a system. It all started out well. I was invited to a new group, and while they seemed a bit in jokey, they were all right sorts and excited for a massive 12 person play by post. Heck, I was excited too. I never been part of a big project like this. Which is when I discovered they hadn't even chosen a system to play. Seemingly out of nowhere, they decided to build their own, and I got half dragged along to help with the basic mechanics. Let's start with this. We chose a dice pool. I suggested fives and sixes be a success, but after I left the conversation, they added one tiny rule. Ones would subtract a success? They insisted this meant you had the same odds of success as if the only sixes counted. Dear reader, that's not how that works. What they'd actually done is set up a system to be as massively swingy as possible. I'm not saying you have to be an expert in probability to design a game, but you have to be at least willing to do some of the paper math. Due to this basic, fundamental error and the refusal to listen, the odds for success in the game were perpetually off, and this resulted in missing a lot of missing. It was completely normal for characters to get knocked out by the lowest level enemies because they simply couldn't hit anything. At least, some characters. Debacle number one. There were two broad racial categories of the group, and group A got nothing. Jack squat. I really meant that. Due to miscalculation, it was impossible to reach stat cap, um, ever in the entire game, and the race's big bonus was a plus one to your stats. In a game where the cap was set to 400, but I guess you'd be a pretty swag fella sitting pretty at 401. Plus, this race got a second feature. You could add three dice, a whole half a success to any roll once in every real life week. Okay, group B meanwhile, well, they could look forward to buffs like doubling starting stats, doubling starting AC, and doubling starting health. But lest you think this was an idea where Group B had a better start but would trail off, nope, they got better health scaling as well. One of them even got a free magic weapon that did 200d6 damage every combat without an attack roll. Those of us in Group A 
did 3d6 damage, and that's only if we actually landed a hit. Did I mention that Group B was almost entirely the DMPCs and their personal friends? Yeah, you might have guessed. I'm not going to say the DMs cackled like banshees and purposefully gave out the best crap to themselves and their friends, but they definitely paid more attention to their own goodies, and it worked out to the same thing at the end. As for why I didn't quit on the spot, well, this all happened over the course of about a month. I got updated in dribs and drabs, and I helped create this monstrous child of a system, so I wanted to fix it. In the end, I was the frog in the pot. I didn't notice how hot the water was until I invested too much time and too much effort. Debacle number two. Today will be a lesson in not sticking your neck out. I'm the first to raise the issue of the system delivering a chain of misses so bad it sucks the life out of combat, but I'm actually the least affected by it due to being given a strong starting weapon that has an accuracy buff and deals considerable bonus damage. Early game, I'm actually kind of slap. But the other players in my group, not so lucky. And it comes to a head when one threatens to quit after getting a humiliating defeat by the trashiest of mobs, and another threatens to join him in leaving. I pipe up too, and the mods, well, they ignore us. Now, this is a game where players run combats and minor quests for each other, and I don't want this to crash, so I did what I did. I convinced them to give combat another shot and just, uh, rigged it a little in their favor. I had enemies take non-attack actions and waste their time, letting the players fight through a barrage of misses and win. I should have stayed in my lane, obviously, especially because one of the players turns around, tells the mods the combat is actually great, and the mods decide this means that I convinced them it wasn't to begin with, and they just needed to give the system a try. Debacle number three. So we get to a two week deadline, a puzzle to solve, and an impending doom if we don't. Group A solves it in under a week, going good, right? Well, the mods get angry that we've done it too quickly and put us on pause so Group B, the OP group, can catch up. The only thing we can do is solitaire fight five enemies a day. They insist this will be the only freeze and only because they need time to prep the next stage of content. Dear reader, that was a lie. This was the first of three freezes. It ends after a whole ass week of not being able to do anything in this game during which we solve the puzzle finale and we are rewarded with freeze number two. The only change being we're allowed to grind unlimited trash monsters, either running the fights solitaire or for each other. This freeze lasts for about two weeks this time and I kill, oh, like 50 enemies. It was two hours of grinding. I timed it to see how fast it would go by. The mods proceed to flip at me for being a power gamer by using the grinding mechanics that they implemented. When it was the only thing for me to do, they respond by implementing a literal invulnerable enemy that shows up one to six times to destroy you if you grind? I'm just not sure why they implemented a grinding mechanic at all or made it specifically unlimited after limiting it originally. This is the one I'm willing to admit is partially my fault since I clearly didn't use the mechanic as intended, but I still have no clue why they put it there. At the end of the second freeze, also the beginning of the third freeze in gameplay, they hand out some class abilities and a weapon to each player. Look, the only thing to say here is that the people who made the rest of the game also made this part of the game. I say thanks for an admittedly cool weapon I can't actually use, and made a token effort to explain why my power is underjuiced, and then just give up. Oh, the mods award themselves the ability to dodge any attack for a small amount of mana, a servant character who can never die, oh, and triple the attacks. One player gets a club that can never break. He can't use melee weapons. My stare has gone past a thousand miles. I see to infinity and beyond now. Half debacle 4.5. They don't do the math on level up rolls and accidentally give everyone 1000 mana and health points. This one's just funny. They did fix it though. Debacle number 5. I get kicked for asking, after 5 days waiting for a single post, if I'm going to see one today. They say no and I politely move on, only to be kicked the next morning. Really, I get kicked because the leader has been in a frothing rage this entire time behind closed doors that keep criticizing their work. And man, I want to have sympathy. I write on the internet for a living, I know criticism sucks, but you can't build both a system on the fly and refuse to listen to people point out the obvious errors. 
I need to stress that this PBP play by post was the slowest I've ever seen. I expected slow because 12 players, but the actual answer was slow because the mods vanished for a week without telling anyone. The game regularly stretched 5 to 10 days without any kind of post and any questions were met with the DMs announcing they were so stressed and on the edge of burning out. I'm sure it did take effort, that's why I and others offered to help DM. I offered earlier on before I realized that I shouldn't volunteer anything. They refuse and instead hire a fourth DM. As best I can tell, he does nothing at all. Until he decides to drop the news, I'm kicked in-game in a mocking message without any out-of-character clarification. They use the guy they paid to be there because, well, because they kinda suck at this. And so the story is told. If I've been acidic here, I swear I really tried to be polite and kind to these people at the time. If anything, that was the mistake. Apparently, they actually have a habit of burning out on their games, choosing a player to blame, and ceremoniously kicking them as a scapegoat before ending the game. Some people are never going to learn. Yeah, that is an interesting situation. So, Obviously, DMing has its own challenges, and DMing a play-by-post with 12 players and with a custom system, that's going to be really, really hard. If you can't handle doing that, don't do that. DMing is already a responsibility. If the DM can't manage a good game, the players aren't going to have fun. A lot of the responsibility of a game's fun does rely on the DM, so don't take on more than you can handle as a DM. Otherwise, it might result in a game that doesn't work out. Creating your own system might seem like a cool endeavor, but if you can't do it, there's no need to force yourself to do it just to impress people. On top of that, if you want to create your own system, accepting criticisms from your players is really, really important. Open discussion in D&D and communication always helps to create and foster more enjoyable games. Okay, this was a very long time ago, I think 2004, 2005, so the details are hazy at best, but I'll try to tell it as best as I can. But my first time playing with a new group, as I had just finished my first year of college, and I was in a new place, I rolled a brand new 3.0 character, a half-elf fighter if you must ask. Very young, however, I think the starting age of 20, you know, because I was approximately that same age. I was the only female character in the group. No, this isn't going the way of, oh, you're a girl, you should play a healer, because we had a better, more experienced healer already, luckily. However, the DM did get weird in the second or third session, had some evil wizard or deity wave his hands at me in particular, found out at the end of the session, oh, uh, by the way, you're pregnant. And almost everyone stopped to go, wait, what? And he just sort of shrugged and went, magic and whatnot. No one seemed to have more of a problem with it other than, well, that was unexpected. And I was like, uh... A few more sessions go by, and I guess we burned through his campaign faster than he thought we would, because I was just in the second trimester by that time. So we came to the big bad, and he had me fall to my knees and clutch my stomach. In an instant, my baby bump vanished, and standing in front of us was a woman that looks like you with elements of that wizard you saw before, only she's brandishing a weapon and threatening you. So the DM looks at me cockily and does that, so what do you do, thing that we all know and love, and I say, well, I draw my great sword and attack, seeing as this wasn't a child I wanted, or even birthed, or could even prove was mine. He was not amused, told me to roll, so after some presumably bad rolls on his end and a few decent rolls on my end, I eventually landed a critical hit. While the other four party members stood and watched, I basically decapitated quote-unquote my own daughter. This upset the DM to the point of being red-faced, and he said, Well, that's it. The session is done. And started packing up his screen and dice, and everyone is looking at me like, What is wrong with you? Let's just say those few sessions were the only ones I played with that group. TLDR. The DM forced a strange Virgin Mary scenario on me, and I will not hesitate to kill the spawn. I can hear everyone thinking, why didn't you stop it right away? And honestly, I don't know, I was young, stupid, and had a pathological need for people to like me. Plus, I had only been playing a year or two and didn't know this sort of thing was definitely not normal. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.
Look, honestly, in those scenarios, I don't know what I would have done either. You just wait for the session to awkwardly end and I guess walk away from the game. But yeah, walk away. That's the best thing you can do. If you don't have the social wherewithal to just get up and leave at the table, which I totally understand not a lot of people do have that social wherewithal, just wait till the end of the session, talk to the group, and then gracefully walk out. Because this stuff, well, it's just weird, creepy, and wrong. This was years ago, Shadowrun game. Three players, I'm the GM. A month or so into the game, one of the players invites a friend he's played with before, says she's cool. We met up before the game, talk a little bit about her previous experience. She hasn't played Shadowrun before, but she boasts of years of exploits and how she is fond of playing wizards. I briefly explain the setting of the game and the premise to her, describe the type of game it is, combat is deadly, being the main point I always hammer in. She says she's into it. I'm walking her through Chagrin, she wants to do magic, but also be good at fighting, ends up making an orc street mage that focuses on combat magic. More than a few times during our session, she strays off course with lines like, So I hear you also run a D&D game, and we should definitely play D&D sometime, which I didn't think much of at the time. I was one of the GMs that ran non-D&D games around here, so I was used to people having a limited scope of experience. I quickly run her through a combat demo so she can get used to the system, and we finish up as the rest of the group is arriving. We start to play. The party is messing with the local branch of a certain well-known elf go gang. They're splitting up into two groups. The two sneakier characters are breaking into a safe house to set up a bomb. The other two split off to take out the group's freelance magic security providers. Read a trio of young lower tier mages doing work for BTL money. After a brief conversation scene with the new character's own contact, where she decidedly doesn't do a lot of talking, they head out with her on the Geek the Mage squad. The mages that needed geeking were based in a lower middle class apartment building with minimal security, so the player characters showed up in relatively subtle gear. The two of them kick down the door, successfully catch the mages with their pants down, combat with brief, and our newbie spent every round firing her gun twice and not much else. The more experienced player caught a bolt and took a moderate wound in the shootout, but other than that, it went pretty smoothly. They then stuck around to kick apart all the magic stuff they found. You might be aware that Shadowrun's magic system is slightly more obtuse than most games, and I'm used to players being confused and asking a lot of questions about it while they're learning. My first sign of trouble was that for the first time in my life, I had a mage player, the new player, who had not asked me a single question about magic. She also didn't use any magic or make use of her knowledge of magic at all. In fact, I don't think the party even knew her character was a mage until I prompted her if she wanted to use any spells. This remained the case until the end. As they left the apartment, they were unsurprisingly met by the sound of sirens coming to a stop outside. The more experienced player's immediate reflex was, Okay, we gotta make a break for it before we're spotted. Let's head for the roof. The newbie, shocked by this, turns around and said, What? No, we should stand and fight. Her partner points out that we're severely outnumbered and that he's already got a wound, so he's not in great fighting shape. The other two players agree. She insists that they should fight. After a brief, fruitless discussion, he says, Look, I'm running. You can fight if you want. Our dude makes his run for the roof while our cocksure newbie, against everyone's advice, including me asking thrice if she's sure about this and directly stating that her odds are bad, runs down four flights of stairs, ignores a gunpoint demand to surrender, does a John Woo style slow-mo dive off the stairs while dual wield firing her pistols and stolen Uzi, lightly wounding one entire Lone Star officer for her trouble, and then proceeds to get shot to death by the six other officers in the lobby while lying on the floor. Everyone else's reaction is an empathetic oof. I offer a rewind if she wants, happy to call this a lesson learned and keep going. But she says, nah, states she is no further intent to playing and sits out the rest of the game in silence reading a book in the other room. After we finished up, I asked her what her deal was, and her reply was essentially, I just don't understand the appeal of playing a game this way. I feel like there's never really a chance to do my character's thing. And what's even the point if you can just get killed off so easily without warning? She wasn't mad or anything, she was just in complete meh mode. Later, as I was seeing the group out the door, she thanked me for the evening's entertainment, and the last thing she said to me was, Oh, hey, let me know if you're running that D&D adventure again, okay? On the bright side, I learned that sometimes you can do everything right and still have people be unhappy, and that it isn't your fault. So, happy ending? 
TLDR, a player joins my Shadowrun game, seems more interested in D&D games she wasn't invited to, proceeds to barely engage with the game, gets killed pointlessly and just gives up, while still asking about the D&D game. I think that the player is in the wrong because she was told the type of game it was and she still joined anyway and was clearly disappointed when it ended up being exactly what the DM, GM, whatever described, which is, yeah, that's just the way it is sometimes. Session zero is important, and it's also important to pay attention during session zero and make sure that you're aware of the game that you are getting into as a player. This player just seemed to ignore the DM's warning, and hence, she didn't have a good time. The takeaway from this is play the game you want to play. If you want to play D&D, play D&D. Don't play Shadowrun, don't play Call of Cthulhu. Play D&D, it's what you want to play. Don't go to a game that you don't think you're gonna have fun in because, like I've said many times, engagement is so important for playing tabletop role-playing games and lack of engagement can really kill the mood. And that is exactly what happened here. Hope she finds that D&D game and I hope this GM finds someone to fill in for his Shadowrun game. All right, if you guys enjoyed this episode of RPG Horror Stories, you want to let me know, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more content from Crispy's Tavern, then please do subscribe to the channel and check out more of our content. We also have a campaign diary series, which will be returning soon with a new episode. So check that out if you want to see more of our content. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down to the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment broken system to let me know you made it to the end of the video. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Farewell.